both cows and butterflies are outside. Are cows ever pink? I don't know, but it's cute. my channel um, I'm top of the sky nails and I'm going to show you how I achieved these nails I did these for a client and as you can see they're a French with a pink and white cow print and beautiful butterfly charm and some Swarovski crystals and accents and these are my clients nails starting out um, I haven't done her nails since the before the beginning of the pandemic really hit in March, so it's been about a year and three months or so since I've done her nails. And she hasn't had them done professionally since the pandemic. She's um, done press-ons and she actually came in with just regular polish on her nails. Actually, as you can see, there it was pink, a brighter pink, and it was glitter polish, a regular glitter polish. And y'all know regular glitter polish does not like to come off. And so if you ever want your toe, I told her, if you ever want your toenails to last, because you know the joke is already that toenail polish doesn't come off, you paint your toenails glitter, regular polish, or switch that around. It'll never come off. But let's get into what the video is. What's going on? <laughs> so I'm using the skiver bit, and I am removing the cuticle on her nail plate. And kind of pushing back her epinicium. Um, you can also use a pusher for this, um, if it, especially if the skin is very um, rigid or hard to push back. Hers wasn't, so kind of with the skimmer bit, I'm able to kind of push back that skin while also flaking off the dead skin, which is the cuticle on the nail plate. I go, I show this for a while just because, um, you know, kind of been missing it since the pandemic. I did it in my last video. And um, just to show you guys how I go back and forth, and I'm going to be using this mini, this is not the mini skiver, it's the regular skiver bit from Atwood Industries, the round bit from Atwood. I'm using the cross cut bit from Atwood. And, um, I'm using some cuticle nippers that Atwood actually sent me. And I'm just going to be cleaning up all this dead skin. I only use the nippers to clean actual dead skin that's flaking off, nothing live. We don't cut into the epinicium, anything like that, or live skin, just any dead hanging skin. So I use the round bit that you see I'm using now. And I go in both directions. I'm right-handed. So I use this in reverse. Instead of going from right to left, as I would normally file, as you normally would file right-handed, I'm going from left to right. And um, I do that because it flakes off the skin in a different direction, like in the opposite opposing direction that I kicked it up in using the skiver bit, kind of going against the grain. And then sometimes I'll go back and use it in the other direction from right to left. I It took me a while to get her cuticle area nice and right just because... It's been so very long, and I want it to be gentle, careful, but actually get it all together. So you'll see me, I clip the dead skin, I'll go back in with that round bit, and um, just further smooth out the skin. I'm just clipping the excess skin and any very obvious dead skin that are hangnails. If it's an open wound, like you know, you have a hangnail that's actually peeling maybe possibly bleeding super sore and red i would really leave that alone but if it's just dry irritating then i normally would clip that off if it's not anything actively open you know what i'm saying so i clipped some of the dry skin i go back in and buff off um, and flake off anything that i can Anything that's still resisting the round bit, I go in and clip it, as you can see. And then I'll go back in with the round bit again, 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 again. <laughs> Trying to smooth 
that skin out and get it nice and together. And it's not going to be 100% perfect because I don't want to cut the epinichium. That's our barrier protecting our live skin and the elements, our bloodstream from everything that's going on. Our hands touch so many different things and get, they get into so much trouble. Last thing we want is a whole bunch of open wounds on them. Excuse my AC in the background, guys. It is hot here in Texas. It is so hot here. <laughs> so, as you can see, I'm going with that round bit from right to left now. Just getting that skin together in a different direction. And next I'm using the crosscut bit. This is actually the small barrel and I'm using that on the natural nail. And um, that's to buff the natural nail. What I'm looking to do is to remove the shine. Also any additional, you can also use this bit on the live skin. So just take anything, um, dead flaky skin off the sidewalls. I can kind of trim down the nails a little bit with this bit. This bit, I say it all the time, it has a texture of a sanding band. And so it's decent to use on the natural nails with a low speed and light pressure. So I'm lightly etching the nails with a nail file. And like I said, very lightly, I'm not digging into it. I'm not going back and forth. You see, I'm just lightly going in circles. That's what I did. Just to add a little more texture to her nails to ensure the best adhesion possible. After that, I cleanse the nails with alcohol, as you can see, just to remove that dust. I use the dehydrator to dehydrate them. I am using a non-acid based uh, primer, letting that dry, and that would be like the equivalent of a protein bond, not exactly, but if you're interested in like a substitute, uh, Opre, they have a non-acid primer themselves. And then I'm going in with a base gel. I'm using the Opre, um, gel x system and uh some products i don't have their dehydrator or their primer so i'm using substitutes some various products i'm testing out but not to say anything is wrong with their system at all so if you have their products go ahead and use them so i didn't record myself for i don't know what reason i, mean, I feel like i meant to or i thought i was recording when I sized her gel X tips, uh, but I sized them because of the way her nail beds are shaped, I had to file most of them down. And it doesn't, it may seem tedious, but it's really not tedious. It's really a simple process. I really enjoy doing the gel X for my clients, which is get them on there and we're ready to spend time designing. So I buff the inside of the nail tip. You can see it looks frosted before I apply the product. I buffed it with uh, that crosscut bit, not too hard, just to remove the shine. And then in some clips, I think I show it, I add a little bit of that primer, again, just to ensure adhesion. Um, and that's to the inside of the Gel X tip. I apply the um, Gel X, is the Extend Gel? Yeah. I apply that to the inside of the tip. You can see I brush kind of down the nail some, as you can see right there. Then I add a little more product towards the cuticle area, wipe off any excess. And then I start from the back of the nail and push forward. If I have any excess, you see I'm taking a brush and brushing it forward to smooth it out so we don't have this ridge underneath. I really enjoy the system and I'm looking forward to getting it. I mean, not that it's a bad thing that there's excess, is easy cleanup but getting it more accurate so we don't have excess in the future but again don't feel bad my main concern is for it to not seep around the cuticle area and to keep your distance from the live skin so we don't get lifting so any excess that you may have you can wipe with a brush and then you can wipe the inhibition layer from the bottom of the nail so i'm using a little handheld led light just a flash cure and just remember it doesn't cure where your finger is the light doesn't reach there so you have to kind of move and rotate and since i'm using gel x more i've been thinking about getting i've seen the gelish touch light it's like a light you can touch it has a stand so you don't have to hold it but it can go above 
the nail but it's just like to flash cure it so once i flash cure it and just make sure it's set i have her put her hands in the light for a full cure cycle depending on the lamp that you have and then they're done so i'm going in this is a thin cone bit from outwood industry and i'm just tapering the cuticle area in we just want to make it look as much as a traditional enhancement as possible um please don't get it wrong gel x tips are made of soft gel it's a professional system but it allows to give your clients beautifully shaped nails quickly spend less time on the stuff that's you know you, you came there for cute nails that generally means designs so we can get to it much quicker this took me a little bit longer to do in all honesty overall because i spent a lot of time cleaning up her cuticle area and removing that glitter polish that she came in with but as time goes on her next appointment her cuticles will be in much better condition they were before the pandemic we were doing them on a regular basis prep didn't take that long we can just feel these tips and keep it moving and so i'm using that thin cone bit and then i'm using this cross cut bit and like i said this is the small one and i'm just really getting the cuticle area nice and flush again so there's no thickness at that cuticle area we don't want it to look like anything less than a traditional enhancement nice and flush towards the cuticle area with an apex the gel x tips have a apex built into them and then taper back down so you can see i'm just thinning out that cuticle area just to make it flush that's it and so and i'm kind of feeling it just to make sure i don't have any crazy ridges but overall this saves so much time and i i know for i believe gel opera doesn't sell to the general public anymore i think for a second they did and i think it i may be wrong but i think it was professional then they opened it to the public then it's back professional again just because it it does really take knowledge it, it does seem simple enough like oh maybe i can do it at home and you probably can for the most part for at least half the part but there's so many variables attached to it because you see i spent a lot of time doing prep all this time with the e-file flushing out the cuticle area i'm also i'm using the mini skiver bit skiver bit now just to clean up the cuticle area even more to make sure it's nice and flush any leakage of the product that i may have had i had just a little bit of seepage on the right side of this nail as you can see and i'm just filing that off and get it nice and flush so those are kind of things the kind of things like if you're doing it at home on yourself and you're not a professional nail tech that you probably are not comfortable with don't have knowledge of so please don't let the ease of this system kind of take away the fact that a professional really should be doing it for best results but there are other systems out there that are geared to be more just traditional customer friendly, like DIY nail techs. So um, Daily Charm is one of them. They have a system they sell to the general public. And the thing is, I don't think they are made from soft gel like the Gel-X is, but I could be wrong, but I don't believe they are, but they are very good. I've done other videos with them. I actually did the, um, rainbow ombre nails if you haven't checked those check those out do so i did those with similar ones to the daily charm tips they were long they were sturdy they lasted i just had to take them off myself anyways so i'm using this beautiful nude i think it's sc102 from presto nails i forgot to show the bottle and i put it up but you know i use these gels all the time between this and i think the other one's 158 i believe I think this is 102 so i'm using this as her nail bed color for her french nails she's having her pinky and her thumbs be traditional like high arch is that what you call it i haven't done yeah you know, i'm so removed from nails i feel no in deep french <laughs> 
Um, so they're going to be deep French on her thumb and her pinky. And then on her middle finger, we're going to do this cow print kind of French-ish type design. I'm not going down all the way because I don't want to bulk up our free edge. So I'm just kind of fading it out. I probably could have faded out a little smoother. Um, and I would recommend you do so. It didn't really affect me much, but I could have. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm cleaning up any excess with a French brush. I'll get nice and close to the cuticle area to the, without touching the live skin. So in case I do, I like to clean it up and get a nice, beautiful, I always call it a horseshoe shape around the cuticle area with the polish and it'll make it look super clean and nice so i'm using this beautiful white and if you're looking for a great white um not a shark but a gel polish color um you can use perfect white from madam glam it's a really great white like i said it's not the one i'm using here but if you're in the market for one this color is from madam glam and I believe it is perfect pink from Madam Glam, but I'm not sure. Here's my problem, guys, is I forgot I'm, this is an actual client, so I try not to add any additional time or inconvenience by recording. I stated before, I just keep my mount on my desk so I can just clip my phone in in like five seconds, hit the record button and go. So sometimes I may forget and I already put the pinks up like I had a whole bunch of pinks out. I can't exactly recall, so don't be mad, but I'm pretty sure it's perfect pink from Madam Glam. If not, I'm so sorry. But yeah, I already put it up, so that's my very best guess of which color it is. So I'm just taking that white and I'm applying it to the tip of the middle nail like i said it's gonna be like a french ish i mean not really you see what it is what it looks like it's just at the tip and we're doing it like in a more organic type pattern to kind of mimic a cow print we don't want it super smooth and even kind of more haphazard and irregular to kind of look like a a spot on a cow is that what it's called a cow spot so then I kind of faded it up. She showed me like a reference picture she had in mind. Then I did it and I realized they looked too perfect in a way, as you can see. Like, look, I looked at them and you see me finagling the thing, the thing, the dot, I guess you call them, prints, circles, splotches. And so I'm like, yeah, they look too organized, too circular, too perfect in a way. So I took this one, I extended it to my big splotch down there. And then I'm gonna take the other ones and I'm going to make them more irregular shaped. And just the little details, and I hope you can tell, like start watching if you're not now, I don't know what sense that made, but see how I'll just kind of pull and make them just a little more oddly shaped. And it just, just those little additions will make it look so, much better unless like i said it looked too organized too much like a pattern and we don't really want that so i went ahead and cure that and next i am going in and adding the pink on top of it and i'm using the wildflowers nail medium length striper brush i didn't want to use too big of a brush i wanted to have a little more control and again, we're just making these as irregularly shaped as we can. We don't want to make them too perfect, if that makes sense. You don't want to make them like a circle or an oval. And you want to add a little bit of texture on the perimeter. You see, I'm kind of just fanning it out just a little bit with that brush and just adding little just texture I don't want to repeat myself but you could just see just you see I'm just pulling it down just a little bit at the edge of that design right there and it's just kind of mm, doesn't really make it look like fur but that's what I kind of have in mind when I do that because you don't have these 
literally like per like texturally perfect circles if that makes sense or splotches or whatever they're called but they do I mean they are made of fur so you kind of want to add that element to it just by kind of feathering out the edge of the splotch blotch whatever it is and they'll give you a little more I mean I mean as if cows are printed like this right but just so you know what you can tell what this is even though it's not in the colors that a cow would be in at all you know that this is cow print and what does that is making sure that these splotches are irregular have that texture have that you know a certain spacing and stuff so I would actually recommend you look at actual cow hide print and kind of use a pattern like that actual real or natural pattern to determine what you're going to do on the nails especially if it's not going to be the correct color just because we have we can identify certain things based on you know our knowledge and we know cows are generally a um, deep brownish black in some form of white this isn't that so we got to make sure at least some element of it is true to it to make sure it looks like what it is hopefully that makes sense so next i'm just going to draw my deep french on those nails super simple i didn't go into it i usually flip the hands around just to make sure the french is centered and equally yoked and i just go over that twice I didn't say, but I polish each color. I do two coats of each color. Just generally by default, unless I say otherwise, I usually do two coats of each gel color. So next on the solid white nail, we're doing that full of the cow print, going with the same technique, making them irregularly shaped, and then also kind of feathering out the actual perimeter of that irregular shape in order to add texture kind of make it fur like but also not really and the, hopefully that makes sense I mean, you can count how many times i generally say that in a video <laughs> Hope, hopefully it makes sense <laughs> so um, again i'm just kind of moving and pushing this brush around to make sure it doesn't look too perfect adding little dots medium ones big ones very tiny and just going up you sometimes you want to do like an incomplete piece you see i'm just going in that corner over there and it looks like it's a partial spot and i always will say that when you're doing like a pattern whether it's drawn on um stamped foil it always depending on the look but generally if you're doing like a whole piece or something like that it usually looks better to have like partial of the pattern it just is an aesthetic thing and it usually makes it look better so if you can do a, a piece of a splotch somewhere hanging off the edge a piece of a butterfly half of the snake print or something like that just continuity in the design is what it adds so i'm top coating with a no wipe top coat and what i do is i add i'm kind of build i kind of build it up because there's a textural difference because of the splotches and because of the French drawn on, so I float a little bit of top coat over those areas that are more compressed just to fill it in. So then I'm taking a resin and applying this 3D charm, and it's from Daily Charm. And you can use Cotapetha, it's their butterfly charm, it's super beautiful. And I'm applying a resin, then I apply an activator just to make sure it hardens quickly. And then I'm using a gel, crystal gel glue. And again, Daily Charm makes a great one. That's not what this one is. I'm testing this one out. It's a no wipe one and I'm liking it so far. So when I have my verdict on it, you guys will absolutely know. So I'm using the Daily Charm Pixies with this. I'm using Daily Charm, their gold micro beads. And from Blue Street Crystals, I'm using Swarovski AB and Swarovski crystal clear crystals <laughs> and I'm using sizes I think 12 7 9 and 5 
or I think maybe 9753. I know those are threes, fives. I think those are nines. And yeah. I don't think I do 12. I felt like that was too big, I think. So I'm just scattering these above and below these butterflies and kind of going from the left bottom of the nail into the right top of the nail, just kind of sort of at a slight angle. And I'm just mixing the clear and the AB. And then in between those, I will add the gold beads. And then I will also add some of the Swarovski Crystal Pixies. Now you can see with that gel, I really built it up underneath that butterfly over those wings. I didn't show it, but I also put a little over the body. I also top coated. I didn't show me sealing around, but after I cure this in the light, I top coated over all the metal parts of the butterfly to one protect the color and to ensure that it's really locked in. You really want to build that gel up thick around it and fill in any gaps as much as you can just to ensure it doesn't get caught on the hair um, as much. One, one, I mean, first and foremost, that it's super sealed down. We added a traditional resin or glue underneath of it. You can use a nail glue if you don't have resin, just to ensure we have a chemical adhesion. And then we use that glue, that um, gel glue, and then we top coated with no wipe top coat after. And that just all ensures we have the best possible adhesion and that it is sealed in well and then once i get everything where i want it i feathered out that gel glue to make sure there was no um line of demarcation i flash cured it i didn't show me top coat and seal around it with no wipe top coat and that was it that's our final look guys so this is a very cute and unique set um go ahead and leave me a little butterfly and cow emoji we don't know my client requested this and it's super cute I guess I was thinking like, I'm like, you know what? I guess cows sometimes. I mean, I was gonna say cows fly on butterflies. You know, they frolic in the fields together, right? It's cute either way. Um, I love it and I love those charms again, daily charm. You can get those and use code Tabitha10. Otherwise, I wanna thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.